Hey guys, Professor Duffy here. From YouTube, I was as Duffy here. Welcome to my, welcome to my five five bot upload here. AI, we're going to box coming down here on YouTube. I was as Duffy here. One coming down here at at between eight p.m. and eight thirty p.m. down here on YouTube. I was as Duffy here. And this is going to be be Bowser and Tom Worship here. There's another one from Premier It's now here at between 9 p.m. and 9 30 p.m. here. Um, on this show, guys, W here tonight here. And that's going to be the TV show of watching Dear No Dear tonight here. AI. So, if you guys like it, make sure you subscribe to this show, guys, W tonight here. And hit the notification bell on here. Give me a thumbs up here. Hit the notification bell. Hit the content down below here. Copy the link here. Hit the mic on here. And share my. Share my shoes on the eyes up here. And so, yeah, so I'm going to my vlogs here and my streams and all that fun stuff. So, we're going to play and then we're going to get started with these two bars here. The first bar is going to be Perry Chain Sings here. And then that one's going to be. Be. Be saying about all the here. So, I was going to be up from Pazza Pro here. Then after that, it's going to be, we're going to be doing Town Worship here. So we got the best by that here tonight here. AI. So yeah, just pray and then we're going to get started here. During fire, I can be today here. And I pray that I hope we by the time of, what time of fire state tonight here and time of worship tonight here. Hope there's no Jesus Christ here tonight here. I hope you can find a good church so Jesus Christ here tonight here. Who needs prayer tonight here? We're going to all turn prayer on our church prayer tonight here. While the town worships, while the town worships, we have tonight here, Warren. And who everybody says, well, I know it's tonight here. And it's two bars to be able to come in tonight here, Warren. And and I'll give my best on the business bar to tonight, Warren, as well. And I've always been using, amen. Amen. So let me turn my camera on and then we're going to get started here. Can we expect our prayers to be answered? Does prayer change destiny? What does the Bible teach us about prayer? Today, on Hot Topics, let's start with a few things that the Bible has to say about prayer. Philippians 4, 6 says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, we may be, let your request be made known to them. It goes on to say, And the peace of God will guard your hearts. So when we're feeling anxious, we pray for it. So God guards our hearts and minds because God's a prayer answering us. Romans 8 28 says, likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weakness, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Here we find out that what we really want and we don't know how to put it to words is yes. we groan in prayer. The Holy Spirit intercedes for us to answer the very things that are in our Matthew 6, 6 says, but you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut the door, pray to your father, who is in a secret place, and your father, who sees in secret, will reward you openly. Mm -hmm. In John 15, 7, Jesus says, if you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask whatever you desire, and it shall be done for you. Colossians 4, 2 says, continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. The Bible says, you have them because you have them. When Jesus went to the hometown of Nazareth, it said he could not do many things there because they did not believe. It didn't mean they brought people to him and he tried to heal them and couldn't heal them. It meant they didn't bring people to him. When we don't believe, we don't pray. And when we don't pray, we don't receive what we pray for. Now, a couple of ways that prayer changes things. The Bible says the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man accomplished much. And we see this in an Old Testament account in 2 Kings chapter 20, when King Hezekiah is sick and bedridden, and Isaiah comes to him and tells him that he's going to die from this sickness. 
as Isaiah leaves, Hezekiah turns his face to the wall and prays and cries, and God hears his prayer and stops Isaiah in the courtyard and sends him back and tells him that he's going to live 15 more years. Now, God is holding this story to God. When he prayed, his destiny was changed. This is a great example of us, that when we call out to the Lord, our destinies can be changed. God will move in our lives when we pray. Jesus said, and it will be given here, and you will find enough, and the door will be open to you. We have another prayer that was prayed, and when it was prayed, the people were changed. When they say faith doesn't change, change it changes yeah. people. The truth is, is that prayer changes things, and yeah. prayer changes people. Prayer changes destinies. In Acts chapter 4, we find the disciples being threatened not to preach in the name of Jesus anymore. And in verse 23, it says, And being let go, they went to their own companions and reported that the priests and elders had said to them when they heard that. It simply says, They raised their voices to God with one accord and said. They didn't talk about how to protest it. They didn't talk about how to escape. Simply when they heard that they had been threatened, they raised their voices to God and in one accord, meaning that there was unity among them, they began to cry. The Bible says in Philippians 2 2, fulfill my joy, be like minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. It goes on to say that they prayed, Lord. And the word for Lord there really means sovereign one, the one who is in complete and total control. Lord. You are the God who made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them. They put things in perspective, that God is much bigger than their problem. So men of influence threaten you, but God created everything. Think about how big the sun is. We're told that it's 864,000 miles in the family. And yet, because of our perspective, we can block the sun out with our hands. Sometimes when someone threatens us, we forget how big God is. And they put God in perspective. Going on to talk about God in verse 25, they say, Who by the mouth of your servant David have said, Why did the nations rage and the people plot vain things? The kings of the earth took their stand, and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. Notice that they knew that what David said was the Lord's word. In verse 27, they say, for truly against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, were gathered together to do whatever your hand and your purpose had determined beforehand to be done. They knew that God was sovereign. They had already called him sovereign. And they knew that what had happened to Jesus had not only been preordained, but it was pre-told in the Old Testament. And so now we're putting things in perspective that God created the heavens and the earth and all that is in them. And if the nations plot against Christ, they going to fail in their plotting against Christ. And that God had ordained things to be done with Jesus. In verse 29, they say this. Now, Lord, look at their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word by stretching out your hand to heal and by signs and wonders being done through the name of your holy servant. Jesus. So instead of saying, Lord, keep us safe, don't let us get arrested, they say, consider their threats and grant us boldness to be able to speak in the name of Jesus. What an amazing prayer. I'm not sure I would have prayed that prayer. I might have prayed, protect me, help me, and in boldness. But they prayed for boldness. And when they did, something amazing happened. That's in verse 31. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. The very thing that they had prayed that they would have been given boldness was something God's will was for them, and God was able to answer that prayer. A couple of things to point in about their prayer. It was praying in the name of Jesus. It was the will of God, and they were the subject of their own prayer. They were asking God, to change them. So yes, prayer changes things. We pray for things to change family homes. And prayer changes us when we pray that God would move in a form. And we get a whole of what you God bless you. We'll see you next time. Uh, Thank you for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed this message.
tells us about a man called the Antichrist. He is the opposite of Christ, a false Christ. Jesus is the greatest man who ever lived. The Antichrist is the most wicked man who ever lived. Scriptures tell us how to identify this man, and we will see what 666 means today, the identity of the Antichrist. Let's look at a few things the Bible tells us about the Antichrist. First, he is a vile person who claims he is God. In Daniel 11, 21 says, and in his place shall arise a vile person to whom they will not give the honor of royalty. But he shall come in peaceably and seize the kingdom by intrigue. It also says in 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, and 4, let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God and that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself as God. So this is the Antichrist who shows himself as the incarnate God who is receiving worship. Number two, he will persecute the saints. Daniel 7, 25 says, He shall speak pompous words against the Most High, shall persecute the saints of the Most High, and shall intend to change times and alliance. Then the saints shall be given into his hands for a time, times, and a half. That's three and a half years. Interestingly enough, that's the last half of the tribulation period. And it also says he's going to attempt to change times and law. Now, number three, he will have a false resurrection. Revelation 13, 3 says, And I saw one of the heads as if it had been mortally wounded, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world marveled and followed the beast. It goes on to say, and they worship the beast as well. So just as Jesus rose from the dead, the Antichrist will have a mortal wound that will be healed. This is the devil's resurrection. We also see that the Antichrist is given his power by Satan. Revelation 13, 2. Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard, his feet like the feet of a bear, and his mouth like the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power, his throne, and great authority. Now, we know that this dragon is the serpent of old, that he is Satan and the devil, and he empowers the Antichrist, probably possesses him. Number five, Jesus will destroy him. It says in 2 Thessalonians 2 8, and then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the blindness of his feet. The Antichrist will be full of pride. Daniel 13 37 says, He shall regard neither the God of his fathers nor the desire of women, nor regard any God, for he shall exalt himself above all of them. This is what Satan wanted to do, exalt himself above all of them. And now the Antichrist does that. It says he does not regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women. Some believe this means that he's a homosexual, but it probably just means he is not living for a relationship with a woman, nor regarding the God of his fathers. He's all about himself. Finally, he is Roman. Daniel 9, 26 says, and after the 62 weeks, Messiah will be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince who was to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end of it will be with a flood until the end of the war. Desolations are determined. Now, the people who destroyed the sanctuary are the Romans. And this is a prince of the people who was to come. So he is a prince of the revived Roman Empire. And he makes a treaty with Israel for seven years that starts this seven-year trial and tribulation period. Now, Revelation 13, 18 says, Here is wisdom. Let him who understands calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. Some early manuscripts have the number 616. Bart Ehrman, a New Testament scholar and a Christian critic, has done some work on this in his book called Heaven and Hell. Ancient numbers and numeric system. There was a number for each letter. And if you use the name Caesar Nero, it comes out to 666. If you use the name Caesar Nero, it comes out to 616. Nero was the first Caesar who persecuted Christians. He was also an egotistical madman who was called the beast. So the Antichrist will be a politician, a ruler of the revived Roman Empire. He will persecute Christians. He will be an egotistical madman. Uh, you just had a musical treat uh, that
Alrighty. Alrighty, so. Alrighty, so right now we're going to get into a time of worship here. And we're just going to do two songs of worship here. And we're going to do two songs of worship here. And at that time of worship here, I'm going to close out this time of worship here. Give you guys a time of a prayer here. You guys need prayer tonight here. I'm going to give you guys a time of prayer here. We're in our, our church family here. AI. Hey, you guys need prayer here. Please pray that you pray Christ down the country down below here. I don't know why I premiere chat here. Hey, yeah, I'll bring we guys at the church time here. And then after that, I'll, I'll give my blessing and you guys will be dismissed out of the YouTube premiere here. So, so yeah. So, yeah, just pray. Just pray for this time of worship here. And then we'll get started with this time of worship here. So, let me get away here. Then we'll pray for this time of worship here. Then we'll get started here. So, give me a few seconds here. So, let me get to my water. One sec. One sec. One sec. One sec. One sec. One sec. So we're singing See His Victory here and Joshua. And that Joshua, I mean, evidence. We're singing his, See His Victory and Evidence for two words on here. So let's pray. And then we get started here. For our time worship here. During prayer, I'll come to you today here. And I pray that who is who is about to sign up this time Bible and time worship we have right now here, Lord. Who is be about to sign worship we have right, right now here, Lord. And praise your name, Lord. And what's your name, Lord. And who needs prayer right now here, Lord. You can pray your prayer request in the white chat here, Lord. This time, Lord, you be a word. AI, you can pray in the uh, church on your word. What this time, Lord, you have right now, your word. And pray always in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, yes, worship. Um. Been born from prosper. Darkness of freedom will prevail. Christ, the rich, only to triumph. God never fails. My God never fail. See your victory, your victory. Battle belongs to you, Lord. Going to see your victory. Going to see your victory. The battle belongs to you, Lord. Empowered in the mighty name of Jesus. Burn bridges away. We're back down from the ground. I know how this story ends. I know how this story ends. We're gonna see his victory. We're gonna see his victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. We're gonna see his victory. We're gonna see his victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. See your victory. Gonna see your victory for the battle.
belongs to you, Lord. We see your victory. We see your victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. You reign, Lord. Take what enemy meant for evil, turn it for good, turn it for good. You will turn it for good. Turn it for good. Take what the enemy meant for evil. Turn it for good. Turn it for good. Take what the enemy meant for evil. Turn it for good. Turn it for good. Take what the enemy meant for evil. For good. And for good. Take what the enemy meant for evil. Turn it for good. And for good. You see your victory. I'm going to see your victory. The battle we lost, you are. See your victory. We're going to see your victory. For the battle we lost, you are. We're going to see your victory. See your victory. For the battle we lost, you are. We see your victory. We see your victory. For the battle, we want to you, Lord. Take what the enemy meant for evil and turn it for good. And yeah, for good. Take what the enemy meant for evil. Turn it for good. Turn it for good. Amen. 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 And our last talk is going to be evidence. Awesome. History. Witness walk beside me. When you start me sweet. Season great right standing. The evidence for the goodness of my body, of my body. The promises fear me, my body. Over my right. We remember where we will become where we we are victory. Run my straight. We always will be 
see you every day from your goodies. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. See your promises of fulfillment. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. God's praise in ignorance, sin rolled away, Lord, just cross and see grace, sins and ways, sins are rolled away, through Jesus. I see the evidence of your goodness over my life, over my life. I see your promises fulfill me over my life, over my life. I see your evidence of your goodness over my body, over my body. I see your promises of your fulfillment over my body, over my body. Why should I fear? Yes, it is this year. Right, I fear. Well, everything is, is here. Amen. 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 So if you guys did pray, you pray request in the right chat here. Let me pray for you guys here for this weekend here. And and this coming next week here. Just pray. Join Father Kandizia here. And I pray that Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Son of God, and Tom, which we just have right now here. Or just pray. I pray for you guys. Let's pray that we have a good weekend here and safe weekend here, Lord, and safe next week here, Lord. AI. And I pray for me having safe travel mercies next Friday, sorry, and next Monday here. And back to Tuesday for my Tuesday on Richard Turn Free Award. AI. To find them in Bob Tuesday Award. And I pray that good for Spring Sticky Award and her funny students are on to get better award. AI. And I'm giving strength award. Who joined in the in the um home and say we're home from your home award, give some humble award, and and give some duty award as well. And who joined in with him finding award, I'm give I'm not fighting your award anymore award. And and find some cows in award as well, your award. And we're all seeing all seeing the G saying, Amen. And you're gonna my blessing before I dismiss you guys here. My blessing is she wants you guys worst songs here, go find with church your word. Good fun, good church here, and we guys were here. That's my blessing here. Thank you so much for watching this first block here on this Friday here. This is what we'll be coming tonight here at 8 30 p.m. here. 8 30 p.m. here tonight here. And next up, we'll be coming tonight here at 9 p.m. tonight here. Between 9 p.m. and 10 p.m. tonight here. So, just you guys know about that. I got, I got, say, waking here. And I got have a safe weekend here tonight, and safe weekend here, and see you next week here, and see you guys around. Big and God bless.